This is the Browie C600 portable power station with integrated solar panel. If you're interested in hearing my thoughts on this unit, keep watching. Before we get started, I just want to thank Browie for reaching out and offering to send the C600 so that I could share it with you. So when they did, I took a look at it and I thought, you know, there's some unique features on this. I think my viewers would be interested in seeing it. So I agreed. So what we'll do is we'll go down to the tabletop. I'm going to go over its key features. Of course, I'll go over its physical and performance specification and its modes of operation. And then I'll show you how it operates and share my experiences with it. All right, I set the C600 aside for a moment so that I can share with you what it came with. And number one, of course, is the operating manual and warranty information. Well laid out pictorially. One thing I really appreciated was this page, which shows the type of devices you're likely going to use with this power station how many times you can charge them and how many hours they will run off of the battery. So that's kind of a nice thing. We'll put that aside. The other thing, of course, is this padded uh, accessory case. It is a padded neoprene zippered case inside. First and foremost, the AC to DC wall charging unit. Alternatively, you could charge it from the accessory port in your vehicle. And the last thing inside is this DC adapter cable with a series of plugs that you can use with the power station to charge the device you have. You just have to match the right one. All the sizes are listed in the manual as well. Let's put that aside. Now I'm going to move this over into main frame here, but uh, I am going to have to refocus the camera a few times because as you can see, it's quite a big unit, but let's just go through its key features. Then we'll get into its physical specifications. Number one, it has a capacity of 614.4 watt hours. It has a running power of 600 watts with a peak or surge power of 1200 watts. It is pure sine wave at 110 volts AC. It uses the lithium iron phosphate batteries. That's the better, more long life battery. And it has a five-year warranty. And of course, there is one key feature on this that makes it different from virtually every other power station that I've seen. And the reason why I accept it, and it's this a fold-over solar panel integrated right into the unit itself. And I'll explain more about that in a few moments' time. All right, as far as the physical specifications for the C600 goes, it is 17 inches in this dimension, 436 millimeters, tabled to the handle, 13.35 inches, 339 millimeters, depth front to back, 5.6 inches, 142 millimeters, the weight, and yes, it's kind of heavy, 23.15 pounds or 10.5 kilograms. And some of that weight, of course, is the fact that you're carrying the solar panel right on the power station. Now, I looked for a waterproof rating on this because the outer, well, I can show you this now. These are the covers for all the ports. And that's suggested to me that this might be something that you could use outdoors and get, and it wouldn't hurt from getting a little bit wet. I could find nothing in the manual at all or on the website. However, I have been advised that it has an IPX3 waterproof rating, which is to suggest it can take light sprinkles, but don't leave it out in a real downpour rainstorm. All right, let's go through the performance specifications for the unit. So let's start with the batteries. As I mentioned, they are the lithium iron phosphate batteries, and they rate them at 3,500 plus full life cycles. That means fully charged from zero to 100% before they stop dropping in their uh, capacity to approximately 80%. So that's on average for most users, 10 years. So that's pretty good. I think other users will get a lot more out of it depending on how much you use it, of course, but on average about 10 years. Now the rate of capacity is 614.4 watt hours. However, when you do the calculations for the losses, such as through the AC inverter, you get about uh, 544 watt hours. It's about 85% on average. So uh, that's still really good to know. Now you do have an AC output and I might as well show you, start showing you the ports now. As you can see, they're all silicone uh, covered on the outside. So you have one, just one grounded AC output here. That's rated at 600 watts running and it uh, 
will take up to a 1200 watt surge. In fact, I've been able to run things a little higher than 600 watts, maybe 650, 670. The literature and the information says actually 700 watts. I didn't get it that high. I didn't intentionally get it that high to see where I could trip it. But I can say safely, you can run items up to 600 watts, which is important. Now, again, we can talk about this more, but the idea is match the output wattage to whatever device it is that you want to plug into this. So you may be able to get a small uh, coffee maker going, but it's unlikely you're going to be able to run your uh, large table saw off it. I just put it out there. You have to match the output to what this is capable of. Now, as far as DC output goes, there are a number of outputs. Let's start while we're, since we're still at the bottom, there is the 12 volt vehicle accessory, which runs at 10 amps. At the top up here, we have, I have to get back just a little bit, we have three USB outputs, two of them are USB type A and the other one is a USB type C. So each of the USB type A are rated at maximum 18 watt output and the US type C fast charge is rated at 65 watts output. Now there are two more outputs right here and those are also DC outputs and they are each rated at 12 volt 10 amps and there you can see the DC input. So each of these covers, let's just make a comment on them right now. Uh, it's nice to see you're going to keep them clean, you're going to keep any dirt and possibly some water out of them. They work pretty well for the most part. Uh, I say the most part, I'm just trying now to put them back on. They can get a little fiddly, especially this top one because there's little projections that are intended to fit into the ports themselves inside and this one right here is supposed to fit into the USB type C output port and it doesn't quite fit. All right, no big issue. It works, it functions. Some people might drive a little bit crazier. Me, I'm okay with that. So those are the output cover ports on it. We'll look at the display in a moment's time, but first I just want to bring this around to show you again the solar input on this. So you can, in fact, run it with the integrated solar panel, which is a 30 watt integrated solar panel. And you can see there's a top and a bottom. Oh, let's might as well show this on the back. There's a fold out stand right here so that you can face it towards the sun. And I'll do that in a few minute moments time. I'll take this outdoors and set it up in the sunshine. And uh, this is kind of nice. Now, what I really like about this arrangement is it's almost really full 30 watts of the, uh, on a good day. Now, it wasn't the best possible day that I could get, but I got 29 watts going in and, and it will show on the display what the input wattage is. I was really quite impressed with that because normally most solar panels, if you've got a 100 watt panel, uh, you don't get 100 watts out of it, even on the very best of conditions. But this was getting 29 out of 30 watts. Very impressive. Now, let's be realistically. It's going to take you, if you run your battery down to zero, it's going to take you a week or five days at least of good sunshine before you can fully recharge this battery. So don't count on this as the means of recharging this battery if you're off grid and don't have AC power or a vehicle to recharge it. Use it to top the battery up, absolutely, but you're going to need, a, need another solar panel if you really want to maximize the charge time or minimize the charge time for your panel. And speaking of which, on the side there where I showed the input port is, oh, wrong end, on this one, you can plug in your solar panel in, uh, in here with the right cable. And again, this is information that I could not find exactly what the, the maximum size solar panel you can run with this because you want to know that if in, if you unless you already have one and you just had one if you're looking to buy one to match this so um, i ran it with a 100 watt solar panel it ran fine i got about 85 watts on a good day with it so i thought figured that was pretty good but i did ask browie what the maximum solar input is and they said that you are safe up to 120 watt solar panel. Uh, I don't have that to test it. I don't even have a second panel that I could run uh, in parallel to see what it would do. So um, I'll take them at their word. It's not in the literature but uh, 
suffice it to say, you can easily run this with a 100 watt solar panel. It's still going to take you a day or so to get a full charge off of that though. All right, let's go into the operation of the device and I'm going to start with the display button. So right here is the display button. Now when I press that, all it's going to show me is the battery status for the unit. It's going to tell me just how much power is left in the unit, or at least I wish it did. It doesn't quite. What you're going to see is an icon, and yes, it times out quite quickly. What you're going to see is an icon that shows power in 20% increments. So right now it's showing me that I have 80% capacity left in the battery. Or is that true? Maybe I have 61% capacity. Where's the button? I can't quite find it. There we go. 61% capacity, because of course that means there's anywhere between 60 and 80% capacity. I'm not quite sure. To be honest, what I'd sooner have is then delete that type of an icon and give me a percentage number. Exactly how many, uh, how much battery life is there in terms of percentage. But that's what it is. Now, it's not a deal breaker. It's just one of those things that, yeah, it could be a little bit better than just that. Now, the rest of the operation is very simple as well. So we have two buttons down here. One is the AC button. So when I press this, you're going to hear the AC inverter fan uh, spin up for about five seconds and then spin down. Not, we know it's ready and operating. And over here on this side, it's ready to for operation and what it's going to show us is that it's running at 110 volt 60 watt AC so that's the output and it's prepared to show us just how many watts outgoing onto this unit once we plug a load into it. So the other thing of course is the DC output right here and again simple push. Now one of the things I want to mention about these buttons are they're not pushing holes. Some other units that I have tested you have to push and hold the button wait five seconds before it will turn on. I guess that's done so you, it, there's no unintended intentional turning the uh, device on or off uh, be that as it may I like this simple operation just quick touch quick uh, again to touch it to turn it off so now I have the DC display again it's showing that it is ready for its output as well it's not saying what the output could be because of course we have uh, the 12 volt uh, 10 amp outputs three of those if you include the AC unit as well as the USB devices so what I thought I would show is first off uh, let's put a load on this and the load I'm going to put on AC is just a fan it's my just a little fan right here, like there. Now, uh, there'll be a little bit of fan noise when I do this, but I just want to show you the display. So plug my unit in, turn the fan on. Hopefully the fan is not too loud for you. And what it's showing now is just how many watts the fan is using. And these don't use very much. I think that's running at about 24 watts. I can't quite read it in my display on the, the camera itself. So about 24 watts. So a fan like this you could run for a long time. And uh, yeah, so that's the fan running. Now, I also have a flashlight which actually operates off of USB fast charge. It's kind of unique for a flashlight. So what I'm going to do with this is plug that in to the fast charge port on a, on the DC port. Now, it's going to bump up the output in the terms of wattage. So now it's a combined output. You're going to see the two of them running together for combined output of, well, I think we should be somewhere in the 30 range. Again, I can't quite see what it's saying, but I know that this will run at about 14 watts output, which is pretty good. You know, that, that it'll charge this unit up quite quickly. So now we've got a DC output an AC output showing us what our output is. Let's try an input. So I have the wall unit plugged into a plug here and we'll bear the port and we'll plug this in. And now that's gonna take a second, but on this side, what you're gonna see is the icon showing that it is charging just like one on your cell phone or other devices. But it's also gonna take a few seconds and it will start to show just what the input wattage is for this unit. So now we've got input wattage and output wattage all at the same time. So that's everything on the display. It's a very simple display, nothing extra, nothing extraneous, nothing that you uh, don't need there, it, but I do think that the battery status could be a little bit better, and that's about the only thing. All right, that's how this operates. I think what we have left to do is to get it outside and operate it in the sunshine. All right, so I've set the Browie unit up on just a small side table out here in my backyard, and it's late morning, so it's not the peak time of efficiency for the sun for late November, but uh, I think we'll still get very reasonable amounts of wattage going into the unit. Uh, 
a little bit of a high thin cloud starting now so I want to get this done before it gets any cloudier of course so I'm just going to show you how this operates I'm going to bring the camera in closer so that you can see the wattage going in I'll, I'll warn you now it, it's it's not easy to see in this sunlight and that's one of the downsides of this display is that it's not all that bright but first we'll show you this and after I have this running then I have another 100 watt solar panel operating and that's all there is to it and the moment you open it up even if the unit is turned off it immediately starts charging it turns itself on and starts charging so that's one of the cool benefits so now let me bring the camera in I'll show you the wattage going in and then I'll plug the 100 watt solar panel in so you can see it bump up in wattage there all right with that high thin overcast I'm only getting 19 watts going in but uh, I've had it up to 29 out of 30 watts so that's that's like I say very impressive for a built-in solar panel any solar panel for that matter but so what are we showing now 20 watts going in uh, I don't think I'm going to do much better than that because again late November and a high thin overcast but what I will do now is plug in the 100 watt solar panel I have here and we'll see how much it bumps it up I'll plug that in I'll go back to creating some shadow over the display hoping that you can see it where is here we are there we go now I'll create the right amount of shadow in the right place there that's better okay so we're bumping up where are we at 67 I find this solar panel is not the most efficient, probably in the 75 to 80 percent range, but uh, that works. Okay, there you go. So there you have the solar panel in conjunction with the built-in solar panel and uh, charging this unit up nicely. All right, let's wrap this video up with a few closing thoughts for the Browie C600 portable power station with integrated solar panel. So, you know, one of the things that I have not talked about so far is the physical design of this unit, why I like it so much. Now, I have talked about the fact that it has the integrated solar panel, and that was one of the things that attracted, attracted me to it, and I thought you'd be interested in seeing. But the actual design of this, looking at what they call briefcase style, really has, well, not only looks good, I think it's quite a functional feature as well, which means it's easier to carry than a lot of the big blocky ones. And I think it's going to be easier to store, maybe in your vehicle or at home. This will go places where the larger, more rectangular, blocky type of power stations might be a little awkward. So yeah, that really is a, a key feature for this. The other thing is the look of it. And now I know part of it is the fact that it's got an olive green cover on the outside of it, but this looks military grade to me. Now, let's Let's make no mistake, this is not something you can drop on the ground and expect to have fully functional afterwards. I wouldn't suggest that for a moment. I'm not going to try at least to see if it will. However, having said that, there is rubber bumper pads on all four corners and rubber feet on the bottom, which will help protect this against dings and bangs from items that may be in your car that shift around and hit it. So it is rugged, but I wouldn't say necessarily military grade rugged. Just the same, it does make this look like something that you can depend on. Oh wait, uh, I've talked about the things I like. What about the things I don't like? Well, there really isn't much at all. And I think really it centers in around the display. Now, don't get me wrong. I actually like the fact that the display is very simple, very minimalistic, it's just a single color icon or LED on the display. I like the fact that you can see it in daylight. That's not all uh, power stations that can you see in the daylight. I like it being simple because it, there's nothing extra there but there's not actually quite enough there either. And that I think is all I already mentioned. That is the battery status indicator. Uh, it may not be important to you. It may not be important to a lot of people, but some people want to know or need to know exactly how much power is left in their battery, especially if they're uh, powering up a device like maybe a CPAP machine. Is it going to last me the night? And the problem with the icon and the battery status indicator is that it's showing you in 20% segments how much power you have. Now, if it's all the way to the top 100% you fully charged it up and you're good to go then that's fine but if you're somewhere down in it's showing you 40% when in fact you really don't know if it's any more than 21% that can make a real difference to some people so it's important I think that Browie look at their display and upgrade the battery status to a percentage number or some other type of an icon that gives you a better 
idea of just how much power is left in your battery. Okay, I think I've given you all the things I like about it, all the things that I would like to see improve, which is really just that one item on the display. Um, I'm going to open this up to you. What are your thoughts on this unit? Is it something that you would conceive as something you might like to have? I will put the specifications and the links where you can take another look at this in the video description. But until next time, get out and explore and take that path less traveled because it will make all the difference. Bye for now.